The little girl in the car was pleading with us. Daddy, let her out, our daughter, who was four years old, said us as we were on a family drive. The sudden stiffening of my husband's face was noticeable to me. Regardless of his intention, he stared terrified into the rearview mirror at our daughter. His face stayed pale. Wow, that's terrifying. From my vantage point in the passenger seat, I harped on the fact that he shouldn't tell fibs like that. Should we pull over at the rest area? Since our marriage five years ago, I had been his unwavering rock while he juggled job and family responsibilities. But my daughter's unusual power was going to reveal the truth. My husband Freddie is four years my senior. I, Charlotte Clark, wed him when I was 27 years old. Sophia, our daughter, was born the year after that. She just turned four years old and has been a healthy, active child all her life. Despite our hectic schedule, our family was enjoying life. How about going to the zoo next Sunday? I put forward, what a relief, I am dying to see the giraffes, she yelled for joy. The upbeat tone of their discourse made me smile. From the time we were dating until the day our daughter was born. My husband has been nothing but wonderful. Even on his days off. He's a doting dad who gladly pitches in with family events. The thought crossed my mind when I observed my spouse and daughter playing together. I'm really lucky to have found this man. These tranquil days were almost over. And I had no idea. So, what? Is this a transfer to a different division for you? The policy of my employer requires me to broaden my skill set. Upon returning home one day, Freddie let out a weary sigh and wore a downcast expression. I was hoping he could spend more time with us, but it seems he's being transferred to the busiest department. Our daughter inquired as to whether her father would no longer play with her. In response, Freddie promised to make every effort to spend time with you. Sophia, I think we should make another trip to the zoo. As he delicately caressed our worried daughter's head, my husband's face betrayed his regret. As I observed them, a knot of emotion formed in my chest. Even though his transfer doesn't appear to affect his pay or where he will be relocating. This is still very big news for our family. I felt lonely at the prospect of spending less time with my family. Of all of them, Freddie is adjusting to his new surroundings and is, without a doubt, the one feeling the most exposed. I told him, please don't push yourself too hard, as I was aware of his propensity to lose himself in his work. I was afraid he was going overboard, and sadly, my suspicions were validated. Despite his hectic schedule, Freddy was able to balance relaxation and family time at first, but a month or so later, he abruptly stopped spending as much time at home. It appears that dad is working extra hours and frequently returns home after our daughter has gone to bed. In addition to routinely going out for drinks with clients, he started working even on his days off. Hey, can you take a day off next Sunday? Was my second concern. You have been working too hard recently. And Sophia misses you. Who do you think I'm working so hard for? Replied Freddy. Shall I just decline client meetings and run the chance of losing my job? I didn't mean it like that, I retorted. All I'm concerned about is you. That's none of your business anyway, was his reply. Ensure you have cash ready for the drinking celebration that takes place next week. My husband had gotten more angry due to his heavy job, and he began venting his frustrations on me more often. Our living expenditures were beginning to suffer as a result of his exorbitant spending, which he justified by saying it was required for entertaining customers. His rigid demeanor now scared me more than it frustrated me. Given his past politeness, he was about to burn out from too much work, so I had to figure out how to make him take a break. Freddy had reached a stage where, six months after the transfer, he was primarily returning home to sleep. Sophia started to wear a dejected expression more frequently since she felt lonely not being able to see him. I was trying to figure out how to get him to take a break since I realized that this couldn't go on like this. But it seemed like horrible things kept happening, impeding my attempts. After suffering from illness for a number of years, my mother unexpectedly passed away in the hospital. My father had passed away while I was a small child, so she was my only parent. Before she went away, I was unable to even have a meaningful talk with her. I was so stunned to learn of her passing at home that I was immobile for some time. 
The way Freddy handled my grief was so callous. His aloof demeanor shocked me when he questioned. Hey, do I have to go to that funeral too? I looked in shock at him. My mother was still family. Even if he and her had a strained relationship, he didn't express regret or offer consolation in spite of this. Rather, all he did was whine about having to go to the funeral. What are you saying? You must leave. Of course, it's a funeral for a family member, I murmured. Growing irritated, don't be angry with me. How come this has to happen now? Uh, he said, I had plans too, without displaying any regret. I was stunned for a moment. He would have undoubtedly soothed me in the past, maybe giving me a back rub and sharing my sorrows. The man I previously imagined a future with now seemed nothing like him. When he moaned in displeasure, he was completely uninvolved in getting my mother's burial ready, so I had to do everything on my own. My husband was glum and silent throughout the service. Are we done with it now? According to his statement, I'm heading home first, following the conclusion of the funeral. He hurriedly left without contributing to the cleanup. At first, I didn't understand his attitude, but by that point, I was too tired to be furious. My feelings were one of bewilderment and disappointment. It made no difference how stressed or busy he was at work. His conduct during the funeral was intolerable. I don't know when my hubby turned into that icy person. Mom, Sophia will be there to help you, I told my mom. Even though I was fuming against him, I took my daughter with me as we finished cleaning up before we headed home. I popped over to my parents' house for a quick visit. I wanted to remember my mom, and it wasn't far from where we lived. Following our farewell, I went with my gut feeling that was the best choice. Upon my somber arrival at my parents' house, I made a stunning discovery. Mom, I begged you, hold on a second. Sophia sprinted into the rear room the second we walked in her expression changing dramatically. She had never acted this way during any of the previous visits I had taken her to see my mom. As I hurried to catch up with her, I noticed that Sophia seemed captivated by something as she eagerly opened a second drawer from the bottom of the dresser. Her mother was presented with an antique hand mirror, which her grandmother had wished for her. I paused to collect my thoughts as I gazed into the mirror. A cherished possession of my mother's and tried to breathe, because of how much she treasured it, I hardly saw her use it, and I had no idea where she stashed it, Sophia could never have known about this hand mirror, of course, the fact that she brought it up and said grandma wanted me to have it astonished me, you requested me to give this to you earlier, and grandma informed me that mom was sad while she was asleep, my skepticism led me to interrogate her on matters beyond her ken, including tomorrow's supper menu, my innermost feelings, and details from the burial, she nailed every one of them, which stunned me, my daughter seems to possess an enigmatic talent for reading people's minds, that is just incredible, Sophia, while holding her head, I stroked it, feeling a mix of confusion and curiosity, you know everything, I said, I never would have guessed that she may really have such a skill, I had always assumed that such enigmatic powers were purely mythical, she wore an air of self-satisfaction as she placed her palm on her hip. Leaving me speechless, that's right, Sophia knows about dad too. What do you mean, as she unveiled an absolutely incredible and forgiving secret? I inquired, on Sunday morning, a few weeks after my mother's funeral, I had intended to take Sophia to see a friend. Upon informing Freddy, who was on his way to work, he halted, scowled, and appeared visibly distressed. Is that so? My schedule is completely full on that particular day. What a shame, I wanted to keep my real emotions hidden. So I smiled softly, sensing his insincerity. My feelings for Freddy had completely evaporated when I discovered the truth. That Sunday, Sophia and I went for an hour before I came back home. Dad, he's over, aiming towards the garage, where the shutter remained down. I followed her direction. I tapped the shutter gently after inhaling deeply. I can feel you down there. Freddy, come on, Charlotte? I asked. He responded with a nervous and uncertain tone. I thought you and Sophia had plans. We're calling off the plans. We would want to accompany you wherever you're going, I remarked, although he seemed uneasy and reluctant to open the shutter. He was forced to accept given Sophia's upbeat tone. After a short while, 
Freddy reluctantly opened the garage, and the two of us started out. I sat in the passenger seat and studied Freddy's profile as we drove. I firmly believed that, despite the fact that our married life had been joyful and fulfilling, those times were now permanently gone. Hey, did you know Sophia has a special power? Finally, as we turned onto the highway, I brought it up. Freddy furrowed his brows, perplexed by my abrupt admission. What? What does that mean, exactly? It's a ridiculous joke, he laughed sarcastically. Our daughter boldly said, Daddy, the girl in the trunk is asking you to let her out, from the back seat. That's when I saw Freddy's face turn pale. He had a scared look on his face when he looked at our daughter through the rearview mirror. Whether he was acting fearful or not, what a terrifying thing to say. Freddy, in an attempt to minimize the circumstances, he stated, you shouldn't tell such lies. But it's real, I emphasized. Should we pull over at the rest area? Our kid was hunched over in her seat, so I made a suggestion on her behalf. Surprised, Freddy gave me a startled glance. What? We are spared from doing that. It's merely a joke for kids. Besides, you know, Sophia has this enigmatic power. Furthermore, it's quite hot today, so if someone is actually inside, it might be harmful. My idea must have made sense since he flinched and tensed, then retreated, his face twisted in agony. Towards the rest area, we arrived, dropped our daughter off in the cool car, and stepped outside to look in the trunk. I don't believe anything is contained there. My spouse had started to hesitate, so I urged him to hurry up. He opened the trunk hesitantly, breaking out into a cold sweat as he realized he could not escape. Someone leapt out in the following second. I knew you were cheating. The heat caused the young woman's face to flush red. It came out that Freddy had been having an affair with Sophia at home while we were out together. We unexpectedly returned, perhaps right when they were going for a drive, so he had to hide her in the trunk. Unable to make sense of what was happening, Freddy frantically shook his head. No, that is not the case. She's someone I work with. All we were doing was collaborating. Wow, at the new apartment. You're doing a job that involves getting into a trunk? It was so obvious and absurd that I couldn't help but laugh. I retrieved a sheet of paper from my backpack and stood firmly. And what is this? With a piece of paper that stated, Let's go on a drive date on Sunday. I held out the proposal and requested. Looking at the paper, which bore their mushy email correspondence, the woman and Freddy's cheeks flushed. I had found everything, all because of Sophia. My daughter told me, Daddy has been spending a lot of time with Scarlet lately, on the day of my mother's burial. The fact that Scarlet is stealing Daddy from me makes me unhappy. I became skeptical after seeing her abilities and decided to look into my hubby. It turns out that his phone contained incontestable proof of his infidelity. I told you that fake plan because I wanted to punish you, I informed you. It's a shame, it's become this type of drive, Freddy argued his voice quivering in response to my sardonic remarks. His ridiculous comment caused me to lose control of my laughing. It turns out he was probably with his affair partner Scarlett during that period. I had assumed he was simply too busy to come home. Even though he was always complaining and picking on me, he undoubtedly utilized the expenses for dates with her multiple times. In this situation, who is being unjust? In case you were wondering, I've been filming it all since early. I retrieved my phone from my breast pocket as a flood of complaints washed over me. I had anticipated this and discreetly activated my phone's recording feature upon entering the vehicle in order to gather evidence. I have concealed cameras in the house and garage in addition to these messages and this video. You are also completely known to me. Scarlet, both of them went completely limp under my onslaught. Despite my inability to forgive Scarlet, I was enraged with Freddy. I did my research and found out who she was. She was a 25 years old co-worker in a different department who had recently joined my husband's team. Juxtaposed with me, she was just as guilty for continuing the affair after discovering my existence. As was evident from reading the mails. Um, sorry, Charlotte, Freddie mumbled, obviously taken aback by how effectively he was trapped. I despised him deeply when he moaned and screamed. This was completely new to me. In the heat of passion, 
I shot an angry look at them both and made it clear that I would not forgive them. They need to be ready to pay alimony. They seemed to grasp their doom at the sound of my stern words and fell to their knees. I got a divorce from Freddie after that. They were compelled to pay $300,000 in compensation, thanks to my meticulous documentation of the situation and collection of all relevant evidence. Additionally, my ex-husband was able to pay me $500 monthly in child support. It was just the beginning of their suffering. Apparently, word got out about their romance in the same area where they both worked. Which led to it being known throughout the entire organization. Because of the awkwardness this caused, they ended their relationship. They were forced to resign due to the disapproval of their colleagues. It appears that the compensation payments put a strain on their finances causing them to struggle, I will keep showering Sophia with love so that she has a happy life. And in the meantime, I am loving my days with her. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.